Hi everybody, we're Jet and Ali Tila. Welcome to our kitchen. We are so excited to have you cooking along with us today. So today we're gonna to be making a crispy skin salmon with an Indian spiced yogurt sauce. We're gonna show you getting that perfectly crispy skin like you do at restaurants is very easy to do at home. It's all about how we prep the skin. Plus, we're gonna be making Caesar salad bites from scratch, and when we do date night at home in the Tila house, this is one of our go-tos. The only thing you need to do before we begin is get that oven to 375 degrees, and let's get started. All right, so before we get to the salmon, which cooks very quickly, we need to work on croutons. I personally hate store-bought croutons. This is, I won't eat them if they come on any kind of salad, so we're gonna show you how easy it is to make croutons from scratch. Do you want to do like the oil, garlic, and part, and I'll do the bread part? Yeah, you're the knife skills master. So why don't you give us some tips on how to get these this bread cubed okay. for, our, for our croutons? You got it. Well, I'm going to mince some garlic over here. Okay, sounds good. Uh, mincing garlic, no problemo. I'm going to grab a serrated knife. Okay, so cutting bread is all about using the right knife, firstly, and I want you to use a bread knife, also known as a serrated knife, okay? Uh, croutons should be kind of rustic-ish, so I don't want them to look like, you know, perfect uh, machine-cut store-bought cubes. So I like taking the ends off. If you have a, a loaf of bread that has a lot of crust on it, uh, remove it, because that's gonna inhibit all that delicious garlic and olive oil from getting in there. Next, it's really about kind of how you visualize uh, the size of the salad. Since we're making salad bites, I'm gonna go on the smaller side because everything needs to fit on a romaine uh, lettuce leaf. So instead, if I was doing a big old like family salad, I would make really big cubes. Since we're working with a ciabatta loaf, which is a lot flatter, I'm just gonna cut them in half. Again, all those nooks and crannies uh, in, in, in the bread, what we call crumb, uh, that is gonna soak up all the delicious uh, part that Ali's doing right there. So I cut them into uh, strips and then strips into cubes. It's that Tila rhyme. A tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. I love that one. It's easy, it's easy to remember. <laughs> and then I'm gonna turn it over to Ali to show you how to make uh, that delicious garlic olive oil. All right, so we have our one clove of garlic minced. I'm gonna add that to the bowl. Can you hand me the olive oil? Bit? Happy to. Thank you so much. You got it. I'm gonna combine that with a little bit of olive oil and then mix. Like a little bit, a lot of olive oil. Yeah, no, go big, man. I mean, again, it's supposed to be super delicious and decadent. The more olive oil in the bread, the more crunchy yeah, and, that's and what I delicious say. it's gonna be. All right, so just give it a little mix and then maybe a little more olive oil even. Yeah, uh, don't get, don't, we don't need to be shy there at all. I'm gonna right. uh, back Ali up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Thank you, thank you. You got and it. And then we can toss our bread crumb, or our bread cubes. There we go. Uh, this is also a great way to utilize some of the loaves of bread that you might be holding. A lot of us buy uh, kind of those bulls or fancy loaves. Uh, if, we, if you start getting to the end of that loaf as, as a sandwich bread, or, or as table bread, this is a perfect utilization for it. So I'm just gonna toss these to coat them. Uh, and I'm gonna prep your sheet. So, so we're all, go ahead, Annie. Where, where was your hatred for store-bought bread uh, croutons born? My snobbery. Do you have, do you have deep-seated crouton <laughs> trauma? Hit me with a little parm on these croutons. You got it. I came from very humble roots, and all I ate as a kid was those store-bought croutons. As soon as I went to culinary school, I uh, had really great bread and turned that bread into um, really great croutons. That was it for me. It was over. Like, you know, life is too short for store-bought croutons. You should be making it at home all the time. All right, I think we're ready to put these on our pan and throw them in the oven. There you go. Thank you, thank you. This is the beauty of date night cooking though. Um, you know, there's no better bonding than being able to spend 30 minutes or an hour in the kitchen with the person you love the most. It's Aww. team building, it's being able to hang out. It, you know, it's slowing life down so you Does can- Does she know about me? <laughs> You're so saucy today, I love it. It really is an opportunity, you know, to kind of slow life down and all the distractions of it's the world. It's quality time. It is quality time. And this also isn't just date night sometimes for the two of us. We bring our kids in, uh, force them to turn off their machines and it becomes family date night as well. So as Allie's washing her hands, that's it, my friends. I'm gonna throw this in the oven. 
This is gonna bake at 375 for about 15 minutes. And crunch factor is up to you. If you wanna go big, go big. Uh, croutons done, let's move over to salmon. A lot of home cooks fear cooking fish at home. Uh, and beyond that, nailing that perfectly crispy skin is actually a lot easier than you think. The first thing I'm gonna do is get uh, my pan hot. I'm using cast iron because it holds heat the best and it's gonna really help get that crispy skin. And the second thing I'm gonna do is uh, uh, scrape the moisture off of the skin. You wanna make sure you're starting with salmon that has the scales off, right? There's this protective layer on uh, salmon skin that look like little armored plates. Make sure the butcher does that for you uh, because it is a pain, it gets all over the mm -hmm. place. It's easy to find skin on scaled salmon. Next, you wanna make sure you have a little paper towel and watch what I'm doing. I'm actually gonna take my knife, very sharp knife, and I'm actually gonna scrape back and forth on the skin, decent pressure. I'm not scared of really putting some elbow grease here because what you end up with is that moisture on the skin. And as you know, uh, moisture is the enemy of crispiness. I think it, that's a theme in every one of our date night classes so far. Right? Moisture is the enemy of crispy. And uh, I'm gonna basically just take the blade, not perpendicular, but with a slight angle, and just scrape downwards. And I can go that both ways here. I'm actually doing it on a sheet pan over parchment to keep from all this cross-contamination. There's less dishes, right? Because we want to spend more time cooking together and hanging out uh, than, than cleaning up. With steaks, you pat them dry. Why use a knife here? Yeah, so uh, a paper towel is gonna start the work, right? It's gonna get you that surface moisture. Because there are scales on fish, there are little divots in the skin that you actually can't see. So a paper towel is not gonna be enough. That's why you're using a nice sharp blade to actually get deeply in there uh, to remove as much moisture as possible. And that's what I'm looking for right there. That was the enemy uh, to crispy <laughs> brown skin salmon. So I'm gonna wipe that right off. I'm gonna give you another chef tip here. Fish is actually rounded on the sides and it tapers from head to tail. So it's, you're never gonna get a perfectly flat piece. So to keep the fish from curling, you can cut these little lines in the middle of the skin. Uh, that's gonna do two things. That's gonna uh, look gorgeous and it's gonna keep this fish from kind of curling up on you because very fresh fish uh, is gonna wanna pull. It's the skin of the fish that's gonna uh, wanna tighten up and pull this filet together. Uh, but that's it. Um, so let's season both sides. Uh, since I have fish hands, do you mind salt and peppering sure. me? For sure. I would be happy to. Thank you very much. Lovely, lovely. Uh, kosher salt, cracked black pepper is all you need for just about any piece of protein or vegetable. And then I'll do the flip once you pepper. Yep. A few tips on looking for freshness of fish. Uh, number one, it should look moist, right? We know the color of salmon. It has this deep orange, almost reddish color. Another thing is actually getting in there, and even if it's in the package, not in a rude way, but just go ahead and push in. <laughs> don't be that person that's like jamming your fingers in there. Uh, don't but it be should that be, guy. Don't be that guy or gal. Uh, but it should be firm to the touch as well. Uh, when you push down gently with your fingertip, it should bounce back. If, you, if it leaves an impression, that fish is not the freshest fish around. Uh, the, another tip for you is also use your, use your sense of smell. Um, fish should smell like the ocean, right? If it's off-putting at all, uh, it's probably past its prime. So, so grab another piece of fish. That's perfect, Ali. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Ooh, I almost burned you. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Why are you mad at me? No, not at all. Never. Um, now, last thing I'm going to do is uh, put some oil on this. Now, and I'm a believer, uh, because I come from the restaurant kitchen, that um, I like to oil the fish, not the pan, because this pan is getting pretty hot. I don't want it to, um, to, to smoke up on me. So uh, I'm getting the perfect amount of oil on the fish versus doing it in the pan. So watch what I'm doing. I'm gonna go down and away, uh, allowing space between the two pieces. Now, I didn't get this pan ripping hot like we did when we did our uh, surf and turf dinner because I want the skin to come up uh, in a more moderate way to push all that fat out. So I'm gonna leave it there and wash my hands. Okay. But yeah. While you're doing that, I'm gonna chop some cilantro and I'm just gonna take the tops off the stems and I give it a rough chop and then get our yogurt sauce going.
Cilantro. That is a controversial one. <laughs> right? I mean, honestly, you right? You have cilantro lovers and you have cilantro haters. We obviously are the lovers. Yeah. Right? I mean, we don't have that enzyme that makes cilantro taste like soap. If you do, totally okay. Uh, sub out the cilantro for some Italian parsley. Uh, that's also a really great substitute here. A little less offensive to some. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, while Ali's chopping cilantro, I'm gonna show you a few chef tips here, right? Number one, don't get in there too quickly and try to like move that salmon around. The skin needs to meet the hot metal. It needs to sear and then it'll lift up on its own. So a really nice way to check if, hey Salmon, are you ready to kind of move or check? It just go back and forth. If it's still slightly sticky, uh, I'm gonna let it just cruise. And again, my heat is kind of medium high, uh, allowing that salmon to render out as much fat as possible, evaporate the moisture. It's very similar to cooking bacon. Uh, nice, consistent heat is gonna give you a crispy skin. Go for it, Allie. Great. So we're gonna start building our yogurt sauce now. I'm just gonna take a little bowl. And we're gonna throw all our rough chopped cilantro in it. You wanna mince a clove of garlic? Happy to do it. My, I've right. washed my hands. My station is clean and sanitized. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Just one, we're just gonna mince one. So next we're gonna zest one lemon right in our cilantro. And you wanna only get the outside uh, yellow part because once you get into that white pithy part, it's going to be bitter and you're going to taste that in your yogurt sauce. So one whole lemon. I'm fired. I'm, I'm lagging on this garlic. Oh, you? you have time. Oh, you okay. Have time. All right, good. While, while uh, Allie's doing that, the way I like to do garlic is take the root end off and then give it a gentle push and then the, the skin falls right off. And then I just do a nice kind of fine mincing pass and then I quarter turn and mince again. I don't really overthink it, but since this is fine, another thing you could do is put a little salt on this garlic clove. And then I call it the row, row, row your boat, but you're really kind of just using your knife and, and just scraping. This is a nice way to get um, your garlic processed down without trying to get your fingers involved. You know, I was taught by a French chef that to get the really delicious, pungent flavors of garlic, garlic needs to be smashed together. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was teaching me, like, when you slice garlic and you fry it, it's sweet. But when you smash garlic, you get the beautiful, like, strong aromas that you want out of garlic. That's so great to know. I'm coming in sharp. Coming in, coming in. All right. There, All right. There you go. And we're also going to add a couple tables of uh, lemon juice to it. I want to make sure I don't get any seeds in there. Oh. All right, and then to this, about a half a cup of our yogurt. Beautiful. Garam masala and curry powder are basically two Indian spice blends, all right? Garam masala is a collection of about five or six different spices, but the big ones are like cardamom and mace. So that's warming spice, that's one side of the world, garam masala. The other side is curry powder. Uh, the hallmark of curry powder is that yellow color that comes from turmeric, and then you add to that coriander um, and some other spices. So just think about them as two different Indian spice blends that have really delicious flavor. The word garam, trivia, basically translates to hot, or hot like spicy, not hot like heat. So, so here's a question for you. Yeah. Can different garam masalas and different curries have different spices in them depending on the region? Um, yeah, for sure, because different cultures also have garam masala. Um, but the ones that you buy at the store, uh, they're all going to be very consistent. There's an agreed upon uh, spice mix and percentage. If you buy garam masala at the store, it's going to work all day long because they're all very consistent in flavor. Yeah. All right, now to finish this off, can I have a little olive oil, please? Absolutely. So just a little hit of olive oil here. I'm gonna help you with salt and pepper. And then seasoning, Is right. that cool? Yeah, Because that's coming Perfect. from my side. Thank you, thank you. A little salt and pepper. See, teamwork. That's teamwork right. makes the dream work. Um, very beautiful. This sauce works for just about um, anything. Fish is nice, but if you wanted to use this on chicken, you're going to use this on um, you know, beef. I mean, it works phenomenally. Okay, so you're good? We are good. Okay. So we can just set our yogurt sauce aside until we need it. Let's check back in on this salmon. So salmon, if you've never cooked it before, uh, has a lot of natural fat in it. You know, you, you hear about all those omega-3s, but again, I am not a dietitian or a doctor. Salmon has a great amount of fat, which makes it super delicious. 
Uh, and when you cook the salmon skin, it's gonna render out a lot of fat, just like you're cooking duck. A really good tip for you is to take some clean paper towels and fold them up into little rectangles, and you can dab um, the actual fat away. Because what happens is if you get a pool of fat, uh, that continually goes that can actually start, you know, uh, overcooking it start burning, etc. So I'm just dabbing away a little bit of the fat. That's right. one of the tips I think that I use the most in the kitchen. Which is? Dabbing, dabbing with the paper towel, dabbing Absolutely. oil. Absolutely. And I've left this pretty much undisturbed. Uh, and if you actually look at the salmon, you can see the cook come up the sides, right? It goes from that beautiful orange uh, translucent to opaque. And now I'm going to ask salmon, are you ready? By kind of lifting it. <laughs> And it's saying, hey, I'm ready. So let's give this a shot and see how this looks. But look oh, at that. beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for right there. And you can actually tap on it uh, and, and hear how crispy that is. So I'm going to go back to the other side here. There it is, right there. Um, a few more chef notes on cooking salmon. You don't have to cook salmon 50-50. Mm -hmm. You absolutely don't. Uh, if you can cook it 70-30, you can cook it 60-40. Your goal as a cook is to nail that beautiful crispy brown skin and then uh, turn it over and however long it takes on the other side coming up, uh, the side you can see. So what, I think we can catch it because we have such an awesome team here. You can actually see the cook come up the, uh, the, the fish and I can just let this cruise on, on low heat until it cooks through and then we're good. If you're super comfortable with finishing this in the oven, feel free about five to six minutes before dinner um, of just popping it in the oven instead of doing it on the stove top. All right. Feels good, doesn't he nailed it? it? He nailed uh, it. <laughs> hey, Allie, do you want to uh, check on croutons? Absolutely. See where they're at right now. Oh, those are looking good. Let's oh, show our friends. Beautiful. Let's see what we think. Now, it's very personal how crispy you like your croutons. I am a crispy on the outside, soft in the, in the center kind of guy. I think we're there. Oh, we're there, man. Mm. <laughs> Cheesy, salty, great. garlicky. Yes. There you go. That's perfect. All right. Croutons are ready. What's next? All right. So we are big fans of Caesar salad, but this is a really fun way to enjoy it by making individual leaves loaded with all the stuff. So you've got um, lettuce duty. You've got romaine duty. I'm going to go into some knife skills. I like this. I mean, it's, you know, they're little bites. You can eat them with your hands. Like it's, I don't know, kind of romantic. Yeah, it, it's... Dude, eating with your hands is super fun, right? And also, I know this is date night, but this is how we get our kids to, you know, start mm -hmm. to partake in some salad as well. Uh, all right, my mind is always on this fish, and I'm actually looking for temperature. You could do it two ways. 125 with a thermometer, dead center of the fish, or if you're comfortable, uh, I'm pushing in on the sides at the center, and uh, that's feeling good to me. And I'm looking for something that feels like your hand. Here, put your hand up like that. This kind of pad in your hand, uh, it should bounce back. It feels good. Right, but it shouldn't, when you push in, it shouldn't sink in. It should push and give back, and that's where it's at right there. That's perfect, and letting it cruise. Because there's so much fat in salmon, um, it's also very uh, a tolerant of cooking ahead and then uh, warming up right before you get there. All right, uh, grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes is up to you. Um, I battled Morimoto once uh, on Iron Chef, and he was cutting them one by one. And just to kind of like, you know, be like, yo, I got skills, bro. I do. I actually do the <laughs> flat hand with a flat blade. Show off. No, it's not. I was just like, my idol's cooking next to me. And I'm like, I got to show him that I, I know something. So I go all the way across and then get all the tomatoes up in one swoop. Really, this is so much easier. It really is. And if you're nervous using your hand, use a, a plate, a small saucer, <laughs> or use a lid to uh, a piece of like Tupperware and put it right on top and, and use that as a knife guard and it works great. So I'll put those back there. Let's build salad dressing. I need garlic. Can I bug you for a few cloves of garlic? Yes. And while you're doing that, um, Cesar Cardini was running out of food one night and uh, he needed to feed people and a restaurateur never says no. And he's like, dude, I'm just gonna put this combination uh, together and hope it plays. Uh, this is anchovies. This is anchovies packed in oil that are salted uh, these are ultimate umami bombs right there. Um, anchovies are in. Uh, Allie's going to go garlic. A little bit of garlic. A little bit of garlic. That's totally up to you, though. It is date night. So I don't want to be like, I don't want to be like, hey, babe, what's happening? And her be like, whoa, homie. Um, all right, a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese. I like to separate eggs in my hand. If you're not comfortable 
uh, do the shell to shell situation. But um, I'm gonna have you take over here because I'm gonna have dirty hands. So I cracked the egg on a flat surface. I opened it into my hand and uh, I just like to let the whites drain uh, right in between the fingers and, uh, and go yolks this way. We'll save this it is for... great because if you have to separate a lot of eggs, you can crack them all in one bowl and then just pull out the yolks and separate them that way. Instead of doing the shells, it's faster and it's easier. But better with cold eggs because if they're too warm, sometimes the yolks will break. There you go. Uh, baker tip. You got the extra. All right. Um, Worcestershire sauce. That's how I say it. Anyone want to? Uh, Worcestershire? Wor Worcestershire? Yeah, Worcestershire. I say Worcestershire. Uh, we'll do a little salt and pepper like in Worcester, here. Like Worcestershire? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Yeah, I guess you're right, right? You just messed with my head now. <laughs> now in, man. Um, all right. Lemon juice. So... Again, I'm just using my hand as a strainer. So I just, I get my uh, fingers uh, close together. I push the lemon in until I feel seeds, if there are any, pop into my fingers and I can catch them that way. Okay, uh, that's done. So this is a mini prep food processor. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have an opening that you can stream uh, the oil in while while you're, you're, you're blitzing it, which well, is fine. Because we're making an emulsion here, right? So we, we do, we, you normally you would stream it in. So. All right, so what I what I did was get the egg moving, break the yolk up, so each of that egg particle can have start absorbing oil. So Allie's gonna put her oil in, and you were talking about emulsion, Allie. That's right. Um, the culinary definition of an emulsion is getting two liquids of different viscosities to play together. In this case, lemon juice and oil don't want to don't want to mix. The egg is the emulsifier. It is the thing. It's gonna bring these two into making a very beautiful creamy sauce. And you can actually see it come together. You can see oil and, uh, you can actually see the oil and, and lemon start separated and then become this beautiful creamy uh, dressing. I love this tool. It's four cups. It's easier than like hauling out that 20 pound food processor and, and they're easier to relatively clean inexpensive. Too. That's it, man, look at that. That's perfectly even. Let's taste that. Just needed a moment, I'm sorry. Super delicious. If you're an anchovy lover, go more anchovies. If you're an acid lover, go more lemon. The whole idea is teaching you how to build the Caesar dressing so you can customize it. So I'm actually gonna go, are you okay with anchovies? I like anchovies, Okay, sure. good. May I put a little more? Sure. All right, good. So. I think it needs that umami factor. Um, fun fact, Romans and the Thais are two cultures that use anchovies prolifically and Thai people use it for fish sauce. I know, it's pretty amazing. All right, I'm good. I am, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's clear down the bill. Let me check in with salmon. So flipped it once. Skin is still crispy and I left it on the top. I don't want to tent it because I don't want any moisture to mess with my crispiness. If you were not serving this meal for a minute, put it in a 170 to 200 degree oven and just let it hang out. Um, but again, I'm, I'm asking the salmon, are, will you release? And uh, the salmon releases, so I'm ready to go. So these two pieces are absolutely perfect. Very nice. Should we start plating? Sure. Let's do this. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Righty. All right, Allie, you want to build salad bites and, I'll, and I'll finish with salmon? So we're just gonna lay down our leaves, <laughs> top them with a few tomatoes. And if you're not into cherry tomatoes, you have grape tomatoes, you can slice, um, you know, if you're growing tomatoes in summer and you've got a bunch of heirlooms, this is a really great opportunity to build your, your own Caesar salad. And my favorite part, the croutons. Yum. Yeah, I'm all about, don't you think like each bite gets like one, like each bite should get like a bite of tomato and yeah. crouton and cheese and the whole deal. Yum. Yeah, that's that's it, man. Um, we can also customize Caesar salads. If you put bacon in it, I wouldn't be mad at you, right? And if you just made a whole plate of these. Uh, how, you, how can you ever be mad at bacon? I know, I would never be. Bacon's my friend. 
Okay, I got you there. And a little bit of fresh parm over the top. Yeah, and I got you a, uh, a peeler for that because I think that's going to look really cool. Another way you could play with parm. You could either rasp it. Just like at the big. Yeah, those big curls. Huh. Look at that. If you're more Dirty. of a uh, parm shower situation, you have your rasp, but um, to get a little chefy, I do like the peeler. That's gorgeous. And then I'll come over the top of dressing when you're done. Fancy. It's date night. It's one of my favorites. And Tila tip season everything. Even though your um, dressing is well seasoned, you always want to put a little salt and pepper uh, even on your greens because that's going to really pop the flavor of all these ingredients. Season every layer. This dressing, if you're not going to use immediately, put it in something airtight. Uh, and it's so delicious to make your own Caesar dressing at home and, and simple. I just put a little bit in my mind. I don't think you need a lot. Yeah, I'm always it's thinking just a bite. what the perfect bite is. And then to me, that's the perfect bite. I like to play with a paper towel. So the way I always do it is, you know, things come out of the pan with a little bit of fat on them. Things come out of the pan like a little moist. I'm gonna just give it a little tap um, and, and dry off. We'll go that way. So you are you would like to play skin side up? Uh, always. So I have been in trouble on many um, competition shows by not showing off the crispy skin. You worked really hard at this crispy skin. You need to get credit for it. So I think it's quite important. So a little bit of yogurt sauce. I like to, uh, you know, R remind people that, hey, this is a piece of salmon, so I'm not trying to like slather um, this yogurt sauce all over the skin because I still want to bite into that crispy skin. You want to uh, season salt and pepper just a little bit on the salmon? I'm going to grab Absolutely. some wine because I think we're about ready to go. Beautiful. And what are we drinking? I am thinking Sauvignon Blanc. Are you Sounds good with that? Sounds perfect. All right. Um, salmon has a good amount of umami in it. It's not like a whitefish uh, like halibut. So I want something that can stand up to it. And acidity, in my opinion, uh, is the way to go. So Sauvignon Blanc has uh, kind of grapefruit notes, uh, but it has a nice enough backbone. Uh, you want that acidity to pair well with the creaminess of the yogurt, the anchovies and the creaminess um, in the Caesar. But if you wanted to go red, I think a light red. I would you can go Pinot probably, Rosé, Champagne all day. Oh, nice this work. This looks amazing. Again. Let's try a bite first. Okay, sounds good. Um, see, so these are fun. This is how one should eat everything with their fingers, right? That's This is the way. <laughs> the skin on the salmon is incredible. It is so perfectly crispy. I can't mm. wait to try it. Such a fun play on Caesar salad. Right? It's not heavy. Everything on this plate is light. You know, I think date nights sometimes are all about like big, like, you know, steak and lobster. Sometimes you just want to cook a meal that's not going to overwhelm you. Right. That's going to be really light to eat. That cook is so moist. That salmon is supple. Mm. It's yielding. It's still super moist. Wow. Unbelievable. Great job on the sauce. And the crispy skin. It's like a chip. It's like I have my own chip. Mm. A great combination. Mm -hmm. Salmon is bold, but not heavy. The yogurt sauce has the acidity, has the herbs, the garam masala. as well. Right. Um, this really is one of those date nights where you don't walk away feeling guilty. You know what I'm saying? I mean. For various reasons. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> nice light wine. Um, I think, what do it, Sauvignon Blanc? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, refreshing. Oh, nice. This really is, the words that I can come up with is completely refreshing. We nailed it. Crispy skin on the salmon, mm -hmm. a beautiful yogurt sauce, and a really fun play on a Caesar salad. Thanks for taking our class. We had a great time cooking with you, and we hope you had a great time cooking along with us.